Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Mission Matters. My name is Adam Torres, and if you'd like to apply to be a guest on the show, just head on over to missionmatters.com and click on Be Our Guest to Apply. All right, so today I have Stu Manowitz on the line, and he is Director of Thought Leadership and Advocacy at Omatic Software. Stu, welcome to the show. Thanks so much. I'm so happy to be here. All right, Stu. So uh, we have a great topic today. So the impact of technology and nonprofit organizations and really its um, its impact on the future in the sector. So definitely at Omatic Software, you're um, you're right in the middle of all that helping these and helping nonprofits. Um, and we'll get into exactly how you're doing that in a moment. But um, to start this episode, we'll start it the way that we start them all with our Mission Matters Minute. So, Stu, we at Mission Matters amplify stories for entrepreneurs, executives, and experts. That's our mission. Stu, what mission matters to you? Thanks. I love that question. Thank you for asking it. What The mission that matters to me is that nonprofit organizations understand that their data is an asset. It is an asset just like any other asset they have. Their computers, their building, the money in the bank, their endowments. Data is a tremendous asset, and that asset needs to be stewarded and taken care of and kept clean and kept fresh, just like any other asset that you care for. We are passionate. Um, What matters to us is that organizations use data effectively, use it to drive decision-making, keep it accurate so that it can be um, the most effective as possible, and so that data becomes kind of a common point of trust among people who have different roles in an organization that share data and need to use data to do their jobs as effectively as possible. So did I tell you, Adam, that I'm really passionate about organizations using their data and having clean, complete data? Oh man, Stu, you're 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 bursting through the through the phone over here, and I and I can feel <laughs> the passion for it. Um, you know, that being said, I'll I'll tell you, it's interesting to me that we've gotten to this point in our in our society to where you know I remember when we first started having these concepts of data and this and that, we thought, oh, these huge companies, oh well, I'm not Google, oh, I'm not this, but now as time's gone on, and let's just say some of those enterprise level solutions have become more approachable and affordable for you know the the small business or the middle market or even the solopreneur at times um, companies um, now we're really just starting to I mean get into what data can mean for a company and and how it can how they can really leverage that to grow their business whether it's for-profit non-profit or anything yeah. in be, anything in between it's just data is a whole nother conversation than even five years ago we were talking about it so I know that was a that was a long setup but I say that to really ask you you have a unique um, value proposition and you have a unique vantage point working with many nonprofits, specifically in the data sector and um, through your company. What kind of things are you seeing in the landscape? Like what's interesting to you right now? Well, it, it, you know, you make a really good point, And that is today there is more nonprofits have access to more data than they've ever had before. Mm-hmm. And there are probably some statistics that if I remember to bring them with me, I could quote, but it's like they, the amount of data doubles every two years. So wow. if this is, 2022, if you go back to 2016, which is, uh, I started working at Omatic in, at the end of 2015, so 20 to 16 to 2018 it doubled, 20 to 2020 doubled again, 2022 it doubled again. So organizations are, they have so much more data at their fingertips. And probably that's because more and more they took pages from the commercial sector playbook in terms of being, I, the, the only term I can use is cloud forward. Um, nonprofits have become cloud forward in their technology stacks, which allows organizations to use in more, to use more and more um, specialty or niche systems to manage specialty functions. Um, there is some research that was done by uh, MIP Fund Accounting, which showed that 75% of organizations surveyed use four or more digital systems in addition to their main CRM, and 23% use eight or more systems. So organizations are requiring new platforms and switching platforms that are more effective for their specific needs, which at least potentially, provides them with a lot more data. And the 
it's a both a blessing and a curse because mm. it could be scattered across the organization um, rather than residing under the auspices of IT, or it could be centralized. But more and more and more what we see is that these niche apps that organizations now have access to spread their data and spread their processes across the organization rather than, say, 20 years ago when an organization may have had just one main CRM database like Razor's Edge or Salesforce. Mm. Um, we also see cloud technology stacks have a lot of advantages. They're less expensive, they're safer, they're more accessible, they are more up-to-date fast, they get more updated more quickly. And so that's why mm. organizations are, are really interested in um, in moving to what I, like I said, a cloud forward technology. It's, it's, it's more affordable. It, it's all those things we just talked about. But the, like I said, the double edged sword is a lot more data, access to a lot more data, which is a positive and can be a negative if you aren't, um, uh, if you aren't thoughtful about all that data and how to manage it and how to really look at it as an asset. Let's take it a, a, just a step deeper um, on this conversation, and maybe examine or just talk about some of the some of the characteristics of the of that data quality. Because, like you said, there's so much, and so when the, when a nonprofit's even kind of considering that, let's talk about some of the characteristics of the data quality that really are that are really affecting the nonprofits. Uh, great question. Thank you for asking, and I love that question because we look at three at Omatic Software. Um, we look at three main pillars or traits of data quality, uh, and I'll go through. I'll go through them each: um, data currency, data cleanliness, and data completeness. So we define current data as ensuring that your main CRM system and all of your what I call satellite systems, or all of those mm -hmm. um, niche applications that kind of circle your main. Uh, ecosystem um, are fresh. They, the, the data in them is the freshest, most up-to-date information from every source. So time, what that means is timely gift entry, timely biographical updates, timely information on changes to wealth, timely information on other causes that your donors might donate to, timely information on um, organizational programming in which supporters might participate. And this information is critical because having up to date, having that up to date picture will inform how you cultivate and solicit prospects and donors at all levels of the donor pyramid. How to engage them, uh, or even what topics to stay away from, what things not to talk to them about. Um, gifts from other systems need to be recorded in the main CRM database as soon as possible, as well as non-gift data from other platforms that indicate what a donor's or some other supporter's interests are or what they like about your mission. Uh, this is all important information needed to build and sustain and foster relationships with the members of your constituency. So that's, that's, that's data currency. Data cleanliness is about ensuring that data are accurate and don't contain any errors and that you don't have duplicate records, uh, the, that names aren't misspelled, that uh, formats are correct. And there's a story that I like to tell um, uh, about a guy named Stan Robertson, and this happens all the time. So there's a guy named Stan Robertson, and he's a longtime donor to an organization, and he gets an email or he gets a letter or something triggers him to make a donation online and he goes to the online form and he makes his donation but he types his name as S-R-A-N instead of S-T-A-N because the R and the T are right next to each other on the keyboard and he just makes user error. But what happens there is very often um, the database doesn't recognize that it's actually Stan and so they create a new record with an incorrect email address because S-R-A-N, not S-T-A-N. So Stan doesn't get an acknowledgement because there's not really a, a, an email address with that name. The mm -hmm. donation gets posted to an incorrect, to a phantom record that was created that really doesn't exist. His own record gets understated, and it just be, it, it's just a mess. 
Um, mm-hmm. But those kind of things, that's just that's one example of how data cleanliness is so important and why if somebody, if a donor mistypes their email address or types their names in all caps or does something like that, why we need to be vigilant so that we don't um, – so that we can prevent those kind of errors from happening. And then the last pillar or the last trait of uh, uh, donor of uh, data quality is complete data. And we can we define complete data as your main CRM system having in it having in it data from all of those satellite sources that encircle your fundraising universe. Uh, or it doesn't have to be fundraising, membership, whatever the, whatever the main um, uh, database of your nonprofit organization is um, that all of those um, uh, border applications or mm-hmm. um, subsidiary uh, ancillary applications um, mm-hmm. that all of that information comes into your main system because each of them often have unique information that will be all the more valuable and useful in the context of all the other data about the same people that are captured in other systems. And this is critical so that you can avoid blind spots in your data and gaps and so that you know as much as possible about your donors and prospects' interests and affinities and activities and passions, et cetera, so that you can build the most effective and productive relationships with them. And the challenges. Uh, certainly are effectively getting all that information into your main CRM CRM database repository so that everyone has the access uh, they need to as much data that is as suitable uh, for their jobs. And do I have time to just share one example? Yeah, please, I do. Mm-hmm. So uh, imagine a major gift officer or a planned gift officer um, who's meeting with a donor or prospect and, say, not knowing that they made a recent gift or not knowing some key information about their interests or existing engagement with the organization or being surprised if the donor brings it up themselves and they didn't know anything about it. Uh, For example, if the donor or the prospect recently volunteered or made an online tribute gift, the major gift officer would want to know about that and talk about it with them or thank them for it and not be blind be blind to it because the data in her system was incomplete. So those are the three um, traits or the three pillars that we talk about data quality, data currency, data cleanliness, and data completeness. That's great, Stu. And I'll tell you, I know that, um, that you, you, first off, we can only cover so much in an interview. I know you can talk about data and take it many layers deeper. And also I know just to just the service that you're offering overall. Um, I do want to, um, maybe ask you, uh, what are the, like, I know obviously you're working in the nonprofit space. What size nonprofits is this appropriate for? Is this only for like enterprise level? Is it middle, like kind of middle market? Is it revenue? Is it employee kind of like how does, cause I want, I want you to also leave your, um, I'll give you the opportunity to leave the website so people can follow up and learn more. But what, I, I do want to make sure that the right types of, um, organizations do connect. So what's typically a good fit to work with your team? Uh, yeah, so I appreciate the question. <clears throat> we we work with medium and large nonprofit organizations, but I would say any or so. There's a couple of criteria, um, and and uh, any organization that that has um, volume of data coming into their main system or going from their main revenue system to their uh, accounting system, for example, where the um, where it's high enough volume that manual data entry takes a long time or mm. generates errors or um, or is becoming cumbersome or um, counterproductive. Um, but honestly, just, just to go back to that statistic that I mentioned early mm. on where we see 75% of organizations use four or more uh, digital tools in addition to their main CRM, if you're using three or four tools and you're and you have the need to bring data into into your main system from all of those, you're either typing it man you know, exporting data and then keying it in manually, or or using some point to point integration that you purchased just for those two uh just to get data from a, a certain 
application to your main system, um, or you're using maybe a data loader that is built for the for-profit commercial world and doesn't have the nuances of uh, the nonprofit sector. And so at, at, at Omatic, um, we, we cover all those. We were built specifically for the nonprofit sector. We are mm. an integration hub, which means that we can, we can integrate data from any source to your main destination. Um, and we, we do all of that data cleanup and data, um, deduplication and error correction or duplicate prevention, I should say, along the way to make sure that your data remain, uh, in, in good form. That's awesome. And Stu, what's the best way for people to follow up and to learn more? Um, uh, thank you for asking. So please visit us at um, omaticsoftware.com. That's O-M-A-T-I-C-S-O-F-T-W-A-R-E.com. Um, or you can email us at info at omaticsoftware.com. And on the website, there's a, a, a lot of information about about data security, about the um, the, the level of security, because we take the safety of your data as seriously as you do. Um, also, you can find a list of all of the different connectors that we connect with. So most of the main systems that nonprofits use for online giving, email marketing, peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, event management, volunteer management, the majority of those systems that are popular among nonprofits, we have direct API integrations with. That's great. Um, and we'll put all that information, by the way, for the audience in the uh, in the show notes so that they can just click on uh, on the link and head right on over. And speaking of the audience, if this is your first time with Mission Matters, uh, we're a platform that's all about bringing on entrepreneurs, executives, and experts and having them share, you know, why they do what they do to share their passion. You can definitely tell um, Stu's passion is bursting through the line on this one and um, what he's doing to help nonprofits and what they're doing over at Omatic. So I uh, definitely want you to go check them out. Um, and uh, don't forget, hit that subscribe button because we do have many more mission-based individuals coming up on the line and we don't want you to miss a thing. And and uh, Stu, really, it has been a pleasure. Thanks again for coming on the show. My pleasure. Thank you so much, Adam.